Hey, this is Mike White. So I'm making this tutorial for a couple different reasons. The first one is to help my client and help them understand uh, what's wrong with the images they have. She does understand, don't worry. I'm just making it this, this to clarify everything for, for myself and for everybody. Um, so the problem is Cricut Design Space. Cricut Design Space does not let you export um, your creations. And so that's really sad. Um, and then we, you know, we have to deal with it if we want to print them, you know, somewhere else or we want to use them in something other than just straight from Cricut, uh, you know, then it's really hard to get the, them out. But we've, we've discovered a workaround and this is pretty new, uh, at least to me, but you can print as a PDF. So you can actually set up uh, the, the project as a print then cut and then print it as a PDF and, and we're getting... Uh, in my opinion, some really nice looking images out. So let me show you what, you know, using a snippet tool um, and then trying some other further manipulation kind of resulted in something like this. And if you if you look at this um, at full screen, you can see the jaggy lines. And then if you pull this open, um, let's see if I've got this in Photoshop. Let's look at this in Photoshop real quick. you can see that it's actually got these gray outlines. And so those are going to print, that gray is all gonna print and you know, this little bit in between these letters and it's just not gonna look good. It's not gonna make the client happy um, and it's not gonna make you know her customer happy if she's doing this for somebody else. And so the beauty of printing it as a PDF, <coughs> excuse me, is we get clean outlines because you know, in Photoshop, I mean, I can't select and, and get a, a really clean outline. I mean, that's not terrible, that selection right there. But, you know, but without wasting too much time, I can't, you know, it's not going to look good, and especially this font. And apparently this font is a Cricut Access font, so I can't even get in there and, and do anything with that. But with these PDFs she sent me, I'm going to show you how to mess with this. I'm doing this for my team's sake, too. Uh, we can open this in Photoshop. We're going to go. I don't think there's any, you know, any reason to increase this. It's at 300 pixels per inch. I think that's going to be just fine. And we've got some, you know, much cleaner outlines here. So let's just rotate this canvas first thing. So let's rotate it clockwise, and then let's zoom in at a hundred percent. Look at how clean those edges are compared to this one at 100%. You can see how you know faded and messed up that is. So this is actually going to be great. So to do this, we really want to, you know, we really want to work with the customer's artwork and make it, you know, exactly the way they made it. So, you know, I'm just going to duplicate this layer over on the softball for print. And I'm also doing this to to try to help you know, so that maybe one day I don't have to do this. I don't mind. I'll do it on every single project if that's what it takes. But if, if I can make it to where, um, you know, my customers can do this, it's going to make my life a lot better. So, all right, I need to deselect. I don't want anything selected. I'm going to convert this to a smart object. If I convert it to a smart object, it actually makes it to where it's, it's not on the stage. Um, and so when I resize it and move it around, it's not going to be, I mean, it's on the stage. It's like, but the pixels aren't on the stage. The pixels are actually off in another, uh, layer. Um, all right. So I'm just going to bring this in real small at first so that I can see the whole thing. And then I'm going to open it up. I'm opening up the, um, the smart object because there's parts of this that we just have to get rid of. So we don't want these print and cut lines. We're gonna get rid of that. I'm just using my um, lasso tool and drawing around them and getting rid of these. And then I'm just gonna trim this. So we're just gonna do image trim transparent pixels. And then you just hit control S to save it. And then you can close that uh, PSB layer that's opened up and you can go back to your, um, this is the actual canvas that you're working on. All right, so now we can size it up 
and try to get things. I'm holding shift and alt and, and shift is constraining the proportions and then alt is making it scale um, in all directions at once rather than just like dragging the edge. And I'm just, I'm not going to obsess too much about making it exactly on top of the other one. Um, but I'm going to get pretty close. You know, I don't want to, I'm going to re-upload these to the 143 layout designer. So um, I don't want to have to make sure that I position them properly. Uh, you know, if, if I do this here and, and do a good job, then everything's going to be fine. And now I've, I'm just using this other layer um, as something to uh, work with. Now here, she also sent me the thunder part, which is awesome. So I'm gonna open that with Adobe Photoshop. And I'm just showing how to, how to do this work so that you could possibly do this on your own at some point. And I just want, um, this is really big, you know, it looks small there, but if you zoom in, there's 100% and it's come in very clean. So let's rotate this. We'll do that clockwise. And then I'm going to grab these pieces of this and I'm going to cut them. And then I'm going to come over here and paste them because, um, did that paste? Paste. There we go. And I'm going to convert that to a smart object too. That just lets me be able to scale it without losing pixels. Like in Photoshop, if I scaled something really small and then confirmed it and then scaled it back up, it's going to lose uh, it's going to lose quality uh, just just like that but if it's a smart object which is denoted by this little um, what is that little symbol it's a little thumbnail uh, it lets you know that it's not going to do that okay so I'm going to turn off this other layer and the reason she sent me these is she's very smart and she knows that I needed that inner part so thank you so much for that and I'm just gonna hold shift and scale this out until it looks good um, I'm not going to trust my eyes though. I'm going to actually center this. So I'm going to use my move tool. I'm going to change my selection to canvas and I'm just going to center it. And I saw it jump slightly over here, which might mean that I'm a little bit off on my size, but I'm just going to go just a little bit more and kind of stretch it in that. And then I'm going to center it again. And I'm confident mine centered, you know. And so now I'm going to turn that off because I want to get the color. So we're going to use this pretty blue. And we're going to go back. Where's our thunder? Right here. And I'm just going to do a uh, color overlay. So I'm not changing the actual pixels. I'm just changing the overlay color. All right. Let me hit. Oh, okay. 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 And then I'm also going to do a stroke. So we're going to do blending options and we're going to put a stroke on this and the stroke is white. And I'm just going to pull it out until I see that it's about the same size as what she has. Uh, 16 pixels looks good to me. I'm going to turn this other layer off and make sure that still looks nice. Yeah, it looks like I could put a little more on it just to be more you know, true to the original artwork. So let's go up. You know, and every application strokes a little bit differently than, than another. So it's you're not going to get it exactly the same, but we can at least get close. Let's turn that off. You know, just kind of flip between them. That's what we have. Mine now looks a little big. Sorry. Wasted time here. You can watch this on two times speed, and it'll be much more interesting, I promise. <laughs> All right. I think that's pretty good. And now we're going to turn this layer back on and I'm just going to remove uh, the thunder from this layer. And since it's all big and nice like this, you know, it came over in the PDF. I mean, it's really easy. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's really easy to get a good selection. You know, I can't do this with the with the pixelated image. But when you have um, let's turn off sample all layers, just sample this layer. Let's just turn these other layers off just in case. Let's select all of that. It's hard to work and talk. I don't know if you ever try to do that. And I'm just going to put a mask on this. This is non-destructive editing that I'm teaching you. Um, so we're just going to create a clipping mask. 
And we're gonna paint on it. No, that's not the right kind of mask, sorry. Layer, layer mask, hide selection. Boom, it's gone. So I haven't actually edited that. You know, if I double click through, this is the beauty of the smart object. It's still there, just in case I ever needed it. It, it kind of gives you peace of mind um, when you're doing something like this. So here we go. We're getting close, we're almost done. Um, got the thunder taken care of. The rest of this, let's just turn those off. I'm gonna, in fact, I'm gonna group these two and call this redrawing. And then I'm gonna turn this back on to look at my original. So everything else I believe is white. So we're just gonna turn this on and we're just gonna take this and do the same trick with the blending options and do a color overlay and change that to white. And then I think we're gonna get a gorgeous result. So I'm going to, I, I like to put a black layer behind. It, it just depends on what your, you know, your edge color is. If it's, if it's black, then, then I put white. But if it's, uh, if, it's, if it's white, then I put black. I just want a really high contrast. And I'm just putting this so that we can see you know how clean that is and I'm just gonna zoom into a hundred percent because that's the reality so this this image size is correct it's I think she's printing them about eight inches wide its width is 2400 so that's wonderful um, and this is let's let's look at our group here let me just put this back below here turn that group off you can see how much sharper we got this and it was a team effort because you know she sent me the, the graphics and they're great um, so I'm going to turn that layer off and I'll turn that black off and then I can resave this and it's ready to go hey I hope this helped and and maybe taught you a little bit about Photoshop and how to work with things but the big tip here is that that PDF is gorgeous um, and it will work and so you know, remember at 143 Vinyl, we're ready to help and we're gonna make sure that your projects are as good as we can possibly make them, no matter how we get them. Thanks for your business. Talk to you soon.